And so it's awesome to see God using somebody who was against the church now to expand the church. Amen. And sometimes I think God gets some folk, amen, that you would not expect to do some stuff you would have never thought they would be doing just to show you that he's God. Amen. Sometimes God will let somebody go all the way over there just to bring them back to where they're supposed to be. Just so, just so you can say, if it had not been for the Lord... Oh, we, the Bible says that Paul and Barnabas, and, and, and Barnabas is really, Barnabas was the person that, that helped Paul initially and, and encouraged Paul. And, and, and now they have, these two now are partnering up in ministry, amen, and they are going around preaching and teaching. We went on, we preached last week about those that were sent versus those that, were, that, that just went, amen. Paul and Barnabas were sent. Sent, praise God. And they were sent under the unction of the Holy Spirit following the direction of God. And they were sent to, out and they began to preach and minister. They went from place to place. And when we find them in Acts 13, they are now, at, they're going from Paphos and they're going on to uh, Pisidian Antioch and they're going around preaching and teaching. And the Bible says in verse 13 that when they arrived, uh, they went to a place on the Sabbath day. And just so you know, the Sabbath day is Friday night to Saturday night. So we're not sure if there was Saturday morning or Friday afternoon, they, they showed up at the synagogue, and they go to the synagogue because this is a place where folk would gather. Here is point number one. Then the first thing that we got to see about planting seeds is that you need to look for easy opportunity. Everybody say easy opportunity. The Bible says that Paul and Barnabas, Paul and Barnabas excuse me, went to the synagogue. This was something that they did often when they would go to any place because the, the way the synagogue system was set up was not unusual for a, a guest to be allowed to speak a word or share a short word. So Paul and Barnabas would use this opportunity frequently to share the good news in the city that they went to. They knew that going to the synagogue would normally provide them with an opportunity, and everybody say easy opportunity, to address some folk who might be willing to listen to what they had to say. The folks at the synagogue were already seeking God. There was an assumption that there were people who were open to the hearing of the gospel. There wasn't a need necessarily there to first go to places that weren't open. You might as well go to a place that e has easy access. Or it's already an opportunity for you. Paul and Barnabas would go to the places that I would call the low-hanging fruit. They first went to the places where folks would be familiar with what they might be saying in places that they were already familiar with, the synagogues. And one of the things I would like you to take away from this today is that we should ask God to give us easy opportunities in places where we're most familiar and people that we are most familiar with to share the good news of Jesus Christ. We ought to, we look, I'm telling you, because God will make give, give you an easy opportunity. God will open a door for you. He will show you this is an easy place for you to share the gospel. Paul and Barnabas, the synagogue was an easy spot for them to show up and to share. I'm encouraging you to look for opportunities in places that you go all the time. That's an easy opportunity with folk that you come in contact with all the time. That's an easy opportunity. Paul and Barnabas would go to the synagogue looking for an opportunity to share the message of Jesus Christ. And the question is, are you you looking for an opportunity to share with that neighbor you see all the time? Are you looking for an easy opportunity to share with your co-worker at lunchtime? Are you looking for an easy opportunity to let your family members know that there's a God that loves them more than anybody? Are you looking for that opportunity to speak to that cousin you talk to on the phone? Like Y'all gossip all the time. You might as well tell them about Jesus. Are you looking for an opportunity to share with your husband or your wife? Are you looking for an opportunity to share? Look, we're talking about easy opportunities. Not only were they looking for easy opportunities to plant a seed, but the next thing, they, they were ready when the opportunity showed up. Okay, all right. You want to be looking for easy opportunities, but how many know that when the opportunity comes up, if you're not ready, you'll miss an opportunity? <sighs> Here the Bible says that they were there, they went there looking for an opportunity. And here, the leaders of the synagogue read the old, excuse me, the, 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 old, the old Testament law and prophet. And then they say, brothers, talking about Paul and Brian, do you have a word or exhortation? Do you have something to say? The Bible says, in short order, Paul teaches a quick lesson on the history of Israel, 
about how God called Abraham to their disobedience in God in the wilderness to the promise of David right up to the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Paul had a seed ready. Let me help you here. You need to have a seed ready. What do you mean, Pastor, have a seed ready? Well, 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 15 lets us know, always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope that you have. Let me say it again. Always be prepared to give an answer answer to everyone who asks you to give a reason for the hope that is in you. Uh, see, listen here. When God gives us an opportunity, we need to be ready with a seed to plant. When your co-worker asks you why you smile all the time, you need to be ready with a seed saying, it's the joy of the Lord that is my strength. When the doctor wants to know how you handling this cancer diagnosis so well, you let them know, I serve a God that can heal. I serve a God that can deliver. And even if he does it, I'm still going to give him all the praise. Uh, you need to have a seed ready when your neighbor wants to know where you go on Wednesday night. You tell her, I'm going to dinner, but I'm not going to eat pork chops, that kind of soul food, but I've got the Bible study and get the food that enriches my soul. Uh, you need to have a seed ready when your friends don't understand the peace that you have after somebody broke your heart. you got to let them know my God is the mender of broken hearts, and the same way he fixed my heart is the same way he can fix your heart. You need to have a seed ready when your family can't understand why you can have joy in spite of your loss. Uh, you let them know, I have blessed assurance. I know I lost that family member, but because they know the Lord and I know the Lord, I didn't say goodbye to them the other day. I just said, I see you later. I see you when the angel sounds his trumpet. I see you when the Christ descends down from heaven and comes to get his children. Then you got to have a seed ready. A ready seed needs to point to the love of God. A ready seed needs to show God as loving us but hating sin. A ready seed needs to point to the grace of God. Do you have a seed ready? See, look, when God gives you an opportunity, you know what that is? That's somebody who's just like soil that is ready to receive the, the seed. 